Bowser. Good evening. I am Blaps. This is Blaps Talk. Better living and positive propaganda system. Talking about real knowledge. Yeah. Today I'm going to be talking about what's happening over here. What's happening over there outside the UK. What's happening in the celebrity community world. And also what sparks me on. So, four, four topics, as usual, every Wednesday at 8 o'clock. We're on Zoom. We're going to be talking to anyone that comes in, that follows the link and comes in. The link is on Facebook. The link is on YouTube. The link is everywhere and you can, uh, that you can think of. And um, it will send you to the registration page. You come in and from then, that's the only time you have to register. And then every time that we come on, You'll be notified and you just come on in, join the crew. We can talk about what you want to talk about as well. Obviously, after I've talked about what I want to talk about. So let's get it on, people. So Today, in uh, I'm not sure. My mic working? I'm not even sure it's working. Should be on. Okay. Yeah. So uh, today we're talking about uh, first of all over here. Over here, we're talking about St. George's Day, a popular celebration held every year around April, uh, 23rd of April, I suppose. And um, it's celebrating the day of uh, English culture, even though it's a saint that was Turkish, that grew up in Greece, something like that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's English um, culture to believe that this is a day for English people to celebrate being English. And so what we do on this day is uh, do what, you know, what we're famous for. We eat fish and chips. We have lots of cups of tea or coffee, but, you know, mostly tea. We're tea drinking nation, apparently. Uh, we drink 100 million cups of tea per day. In the UK, that's a lot of tea and sugar. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what the question is this time, this time around, is, um, is are we losing British culture? Is it going down? The UK is made of uh, four different countries. We've got Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England. We make up the British Isles. And we have been talking for years how the, the you know, the far right has been talking for years. <laughs> Brexit made it, uh, uh, you know, apparently uh, a truth of the what the, the far right British think of immigration. They wanted to split away from Europe, which was letting immigrants come in by the billion. And they were worried that, Inherently, it would decrease the culture of Britain to the point of it becoming a different kind of country. And I think the main bone of contention was that it was becoming Islam um, prolific, and therefore they were being called Islamophobic and xenophobic uh, to the point where they were hushed and their inherent, what they felt were their rights to their British culture being etched away. Now, some would say that when, um, well, you know what? I'm going to play a, a, a couple of videos because the celebrations were in London, obviously, and they were seen as problems for the police and for you know, the surrounding uh, residents. They thought they were going to riot, be a problem.
So I have a couple of videos to show you. Oops. Sure that's one. Let's get in this. There you go. There we go. Make sure the bit. Right. Where is it gone? Oops. Oh, I've still got this up. My bad. I will sort this out. I'm by myself here. I'm my own production assistant. <laughs> so take that down. There we go. This should be right now. There we go. Good. Let's play this one first. Yeah. And it's I don't think there's any sound to this one, so don't be dismayed. Actually, I'm not sure what this sound is. You know, there were scuffles. Apparently a horse got hurt. I saw that they got their elbows oh, out on a uh, bit earlier when they could control the numbers. Let's start again, because apparently that's got sound. Okay. Group of people forced their way through the line, ahead of the organised gathering. And obviously, they're ready for them. Fight this crap. Event went proceeded smoothly. That's okay then. Just isolated incidents. Event is not due to start for now. Got the officers already dealing with disorder that is here located. I saw that they got their elbows out on uh, a bit earlier when they could control the numbers. Yeah. But um, on the other marches, they can't control the numbers, I don't think. So I think they're struggling. So when they get an opportunity to get their elbows out and there's this flag flying around, they will take it, won't they? It's not these guys, it's not the coppers. The rank and file that are the, are the problem in London. It's Rowley and Khan, you know, and they're making, they're causing a lot of disharmony in this capital city. Why is it important for you to come down here to express your opinions, especially on St George's Day? Why do you feel the well? Need to uh, because I'm uh, around like-minded people, and uh, you call it camaraderie. And I met a few other people that um, anti you as they suggested I come down here. We're just down here giving the support for the uh, English people of this country who are let down by politicians. How are they let down by politicians? They, they don't care about us no more. They do, absolutely do not care about the British people anymore, uh, the English people. What do you think about the police presence here? It's quite sort of well, yeah, well, it's it, and they're in their riot gear. They're not in their riot gear when they're doing the old marches for the Hamas, are they? Do you know what I mean? England! England is ours! London is ours! Everyone make sure they will get a pleasure to Thank you for coming. I've got a bit of plans, so I'll see you next Yeah, so that's one level. We can have it on a more... That's... Like, people doing their own reports level. Now I'm going to play another video of a broadcast, actually. This was a comedian's view of it. Hello, I'm Sergeant Constable Detective Officer Peter Pisspot from Twat Valley Police. Assalamu alaikum. 
Many of you will be aware of the disgraceful events of yesterday afternoon when a large number of flagrantly English people congregated in central London and were being openly and aggressively English in a built-up area. They were openly wearing quite racist Cross of St George plastic capes, violently waving flags about and chanting well-known hate-mongering terrorist songs such as Sweet Caroline and Take Me Home Country Roads. One man was arrested for tomfoolery, another for far tossing about. One further arrest was made for gammony conduct. One of my fellow officers on horseback charged at someone in a crowd. The horse hurt his leg and that thug was quite rightly pulled from the melee and arrested on animal cruelty charges. Make no mistake, this unsavoury mob was engaging in quite vocal celebratory behaviour in what was clearly a reprehensible display of civic pride. Luckily, a Section 60 order was put in place by Sadiq Khan and Met Commissioner Mark Rowley, so we were able to get amongst the crowd and give a few people a right good kicking in the name of community cohesion. Obviously, we've been very restricted from engaging with Islamist protesters over many weekends since last October, so it was not nice to finally blow off some steam and take out our frustrations on some white English people who couldn't feasibly accuse us of racism. We do understand that these hooligans were gathered in London to celebrate St George's Day and whilst that sort of thing might be acceptable in English towns, it certainly isn't appropriate in the Islamic Caliphate of Londonistan. It is of course all a load of nonsense anyway, because as we all know, St George was Turkish, and that's exactly what I said to a few of these people as I was shoving them about and forcing them to the ground for no good reason. Whatever the occasion may be, we simply can't have English people meeting up being English, doing English stuff and celebrating England. That sort of bigotry is unacceptable in our modern, vibrant and inclusive society. If you're a pro-Palestine protester, go ahead and carry on being as anti-Semitic as you like. If you're protesting on behalf of Just Stop Oil, Trans Rights or BLM, by all means do whatever you want, cause as much disruption as possible, feel free to make people's lives an absolute misery. But if you're English and you want to celebrate your nationhood, like it or not, Sadiq has instructed us to come down on you like a two-tier ton of bricks. So watch out, behave yourselves, assalamu alaikum, namaste, kumbaya. <laughs> I forget this guy's name. Why is that? Why do I always forget this guy's name? He's poor something. I don't remember, but that is pretty much shows you the um, mindset behind the British people. Some of the British people, I would say, that were taking in, were getting involved in the celebrations, and they fell because of past um, protests or you know uh, Palestine stuff going on with Gaza and Israel that their flags were not being taken away from them, but the George's flag were being taken away because now it's deemed by Muslims as offensive. So therefore, um, they're trying to get the police to see it as, 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 as a war crime. It's a, it's a hate speech. It's, it's something against us. We're a protected group. And, um, you know, the police kowtow, but... I'm telling you now, this is my opinion here now. This is not, does not bode well for Islam. This does not bode well for Islam. There's a certain thing going on in America. Trump is going through the court system and he's, you know, rightly so, he's a total criminal, in my opinion. But, 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 <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's finally getting his cup up and so he's coming up against um, everything. And no matter what he has done, which is utterly reprehensible in terms of women's misogyny, the racism, the every, everything about Trump, is diabolically, unbelievably disgusting, even to the point where people are now talking about he smells because 
they think he wears adult nappies. And so he, when, when he farts, he's getting continence and therefore he, he doesn't know if he's farted or he's shat. So it's getting crazy against Donald Trump. But no matter what, he's still got his MAGA people, his MAGA tribe, who have now taken over the GOP. And he's got the the Republican Party, which he is ahead of, and massively popular with the Republican Party. And the thing is, they have to back him up because they're too scared of him. They're scared of him completely. They're scared that he's got the mouthpiece of the people that are supporting him, which are as bad as him, just as bad as him, terrible people. They don't give a damn what he does. Go to jail, shoot someone in the face in the street. Doesn't matter. He's our cult leader. He's our leader. And so, therefore, he can do no wrong. He is Jesus walking on water. He's actually comparing himself to Jesus. And no matter what, the Republican Party, who have been there for years before Donald Trump turned up and have been doing it their way for years and are very successful at it. They've been they've had more a, a lot more presidents than the Democrats have had. Uh, they're doing it their way. They have had to kowtow to Donald Trump and say, yeah, on on media, we love Donald Trump. He's our leader. And move on. And in the background, they're like, oh, I hate this guy. He's a total idiot. We got to get rid of him. But they have to say it. So they're recorded saying it. So Donald Trump, who is a total child, will basically say, will basically say, yeah, I saw what you said about me in your in the past, and you've backed me up. So now they can just, ooh, this gangster is not going to come after me once he loses. That's all he, they can say. He would lose on his own mountaintop, in the, on his own hilltop, and that will be it. They will just say, good, you lost, and it was nothing to do with us. You can't point the finger at us for doing what you're doing. Hello, Michelle. Hi. <laughs> Turn the camera off if it... Don't people to see your uh, your bits <laughs> okay be careful all right if you can hear me be careful you're you're in bed i can see how you doing you okay you okay <laughs> I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're muted. You're muted. You have to turn your your sound on. I'll let you work it out. Have you got press the mic icon? Can you hear me? Yeah, press the mic up. Get Careful how you move about. <laughs> right. Okay. Comment when you're ready. Um, yeah, so this is the same thing for um, going on in um, in England with this uh, protest, you know, the, the English people, the, the Muslims basically are going against anything English and they're gradually taking over and doing their thing and what I'm saying is that the police are saying yes we're backing you up yes we're going by your rights yes we're going, until the point where they say right we're going to try and take you over and then you'll see them getting clouded down and why I say it will back backfire on them at that point the media will backfire on Islam and say um, these are the evil guys. We tried to give them a bit of rope. We wanted them to be more inclusive. We weren't against them racially, but look what we did in the protests. We let them uh, do what they wanted and we didn't cloud down on them, blah, blah, blah. And every time they have a, a problem with us, we count out, we're, we're good. We, we're 
rock on with them. But they've gone too far now. They are exactly what we thought they were. Terrorists. And that's the T word that's going to be mentioned. And no matter what Islam, Muslims in the street, around the corner, who have done nothing wrong, totally innocent, awesome people, they're going to be tarred with the same brush as the terrorist, hardcore, far right of Islam. And it's going to, it's going to be terrifying for them because look what happened in France. France are do it our way or get the hell out. And uh, you, when you're when you arrive in France and you want to become a citizen of France, you are French. You are our culture. You are abide by what we do. Yes, you'll be allowed to do this, that, and the other, but to a point. And if we tell you to not wear hijab, you better not wear that hijab or we will rip it off your face. <laughs> rip it off your head and put you in jail for it because you're frightening our culture. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen in England with the George um, St. George celebrations. The police were just waiting for this because they're showing the people like Islam and anyone else that thinks, oh yeah, we're, you know, Sunak can't show that he's down with because he's of the same ilk, Asian, blah, blah, blah. So he can't be down with them. It's like Obama when he was in power. He couldn't do everything for black people. Just say, yeah, yeah, black people, yeah. I'm finally in, yeah, we got it, yeah, it's high five, high five. Yeah, we're here, we're here, we can do what we want and run roughshod of everything that is cultural, culturally white. <laughs> <laughs> or European, he had to chill and he had to do more for the Caucasian side of his um, base, his fan base, than his own, to the point where black people are like, you didn't do anything for us. And all he can do is try and do things in the background and get things done that you're not really going to hear about, but he did do, and uh, you know, things that help everyone you know, I mean, mostly us, but everyone, that to the point where the other side can't say, oh, he's doing it for his own people. No, he's half black, he's half white. So therefore, which side are you talking about? So it's okay for Obama. But Sunak is fully Asian. So <laughs> both his parents are from the same place. So he can't be seen, and Sadiq Khan, they both can't be seen to be doing anything overtly for their own people. They have to be on both sides and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, they're doing all this. But I'm telling you, if is if if their people go too far, do something totally criminal and totally terrorizing, everyone's gonna go back to 7-Eleven. Everyone's gonna go back to the last point they talked to a Muslim. Oh yeah, I thought he was nice. But they all got the same thing in their mind. They all want to kill us. Blah, blah, blah. That's, I'm telling you now, mark my words. I have prophesied it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I've got one more video on this subject to show. Uh, I don't know where my, my guest is still here. She can tell me while go on. Okay. Oh, wrong button. I know. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. One more video, here we go. Mm -hmm. QQ. Oh, that's the wrong one. My bad. Okie dokie. Let's try again. Just so close together. This one. Yep, there we go. We don't have an identity, it's been eroded, been taken from us. Things like nursery rhymes, we don't have. I know it sounds daft, um, our um, nation's food has drastically changed. Like fish and chips. Yeah, um, but even your standard meat. Do you meat, think there's less fish and chips down the Your meat, meat and two veg. We're a coffee nation, not a tea nation anymore. Why are you here today? I'm here today because I'm a proud Englishman and I've had enough of this country being taken away from us 
um, from government more than anything, the elites, the globalists. Um, so it's St George's Day and he's one of our national heroes and a lot of um, our values, they were taught to us, well we learned them from him. We've come for our grandchildren because we don't want them to grow up having to hide in a room talking about how things used to be in this country. We want them to be as they were in our country. And talk to me about your sign. My sign, obviously it's a nod to Gideon Flater with regards to the openly Jewish on the street, which I totally disagree with. Um, we should be completely equal in our country and we're not. If you are a nationalist, if you are proud to be uh, English, proud to be British, they will push you down. It's, it's, a, it's a government agenda. What do you think about the state of the UK right now? I think it's in, in a terrible state. Why do you think that? Because they're supporting the wrong things and not looking at, you know, that we're, we're, like we're saying that, we're, we're trouble causing and we're not. We're, we're here to take back something of ours. We have seen all different saints days going on, all different religious days going on. So we're just something Like St George's us. Day? Yeah. Why do you say that we're not equal? What do you mean by that? I just think there's a lot of unfairness going on within the country. This country, it's no longer equal to all. It used to be all we tried to be. So back in the 90s, we were all talking about equal opportunities. Then we went into inclusivity and diversity. And somewhere along the way, we've lost ourselves. And we're not equal at all. There are some people, you know, it is that, you know, the old, the old adage about some are more, more equal than others. Could you provide some examples of where, like, it's happened to you? I probably don't really want to say anything. And you said the country being taken away from you. Could you give some examples of what you mean by that? Well, that's a tricky question. <laughs> you chuck that in there, didn't you? Um, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can have a Palestinian march through our own capital, and then you have someone with an English flag being arrested on the same day. In the police presence, um, every time, They've actually been um, against me. I'm just an innocent English woman standing up and just putting my voice, which is my right to do so. For example, when it was Armistice Day, we saw a lot of violence going on between the protesters and the police. Do you think that perhaps this is tainting the image of, for example, people here today and the cause they're trying to represent? I, I personally don't think it does, because I think um, it's the government and the Met Police failing to provide an adequate level of care so people feel as if they have to step up and take it into their own hands. I, I, came, I came on the, um, the day when we protected the Cenotaph and also uh, the... Do you think you protected the Cenotaph? We weren't even allowed near it. There were reports of clashes here today between the protesters and the police. What do you think of that? I, I'm not sure how true that is. I haven't seen any clashes. Where, where were the clashes? You know, lies will always be found out, and that's a lie. I didn't see that. I did not see. This is it today. Oh, OK. For example, a police horse was hit in the face of an umbrella. Ooh. What do you think of that? Um, let's just say that's true. That never should have happened. Yes, uh, that man needs to be arrested if he did that. In terms of the state of the UK, what do you think of that? Gone to hell in a handcart. So, um, back... So, there we go. Um, I just need to find out um, who's in here. Shell's there. Shell, can you tell me? Can you hear me? Just in a... Da -da -da -da. Speak amongst yourselves. Da -da -da. Right, just putting out that, just making sure I can be heard, that the videos can be heard. It's not good when you're by yourself. You can't tell if you're being heard, if you've done everything right. You only find out afterwards. You have to edit the video. Right, so that's what we're talking about in over here, inside the UK is uh is our culture 
the British culture being eroded? Is it being taken away? Because once we get to our celebration or the British celebration, typical one, like St. George's Day, we're trampled on, no matter if we do nothing or if we turn up and want to be aggressive, we're seen as the enemy because the people in power have made the narrative that far right are people who um, love St. George and uh, the Red Cross on the white background uh, is almost like a fascist symbol now. <laughs> so they are Nazis and they are, you know, just out there to cause trouble. Uh, race, they're racist. They're not our people. They're not of us. And um, there you go. This, well, we're talking about it over here. Um, we're going to move on unless anyone has got anything they want to talk and say about that. Come in. Let me know. If you just want to continue watching, that's cool too. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Checking chat. Yes, so every every time I do my show. Uh, back in the past, the Tropic FM, you see the Tropic FM background in the past. Um, I was talking, I was with Boogie, I'm Black, and my co-host was Boogie. And he was uh, always next to me on another computer talking in the chat because we'd be around the world. It was going around the world at that time. It was readily available on the internet. So, um, is internet show, so I would play music and everything like that, and people would see it and talk about what I've talked about and comment in real time uh, from wherever they come from, Germany, Africa, France, no matter what, and they'll talk, they'll be, I'll be talking, or rather Boogie will be chatting to them, and so I'll be just talking to the camera like this. Uh, it's not a problem for me to talk to, <laughs> to myself for a couple of hours, and at any time, he would say a question from the outside world. I would, uh, yeah, okay, cool. And I'll answer it straight away. So if you've got anything you want to say about anything I'm talking about, you say in the chat if you want to, remain silent and anonymous, or just put your camera on and chat to me. I've got no problem. I ain't scared. I'm ready. And I'll talk about anything you want to talk about as well. All right, moving on. Since, uh, oh, and my, my answer to the question is no. We're still got our British culture. We're the main um, a map, you know, we're the core of UK, as in British people, uh, not immigrants. We are the core. I mean, there's, that's a silly thing to say when, the whole of Britain consists of immigrants, <laughs> right? Because there's, to me, there's no one actually proper English. You go a couple of hundred years back, um, you know, it's only in the last hundred years you've got, um, oh, you know what? It's, you'd have to go back hundreds of years before to get a proper British person, what, well, born in, you know what I'm saying? That didn't have a descendant from overseas. No, you know what? I'm going to confidently say, Britain is a nation of immigrants and we've always had to deal with someone different in our classrooms, in our restaurants. Uh, it's only like the 70s where you had proper racism going on and the 60s when people came over to help rebuild Britain and um, obviously the ignorance and the fear overcame their sensibility and as they got to know us, they found that we've got the same problems as them. And as new immigrants came in, wave after wave, after generation after generation, you got different wave of immigrants, different wave of immigrants. Um, they got their hatred. They got rallied against from the, sometimes from the immigrants that came in before them. Uh, these people are coming to get their jobs. They're coming to take our women. 
<laughs> and um, the same old thing happens over and over again. It's like no one learns what's going on. But yeah, I'm saying the British way of doing things, the culture, stiff up a lip, drinking tea, um, get a, be calm and carry on, um, fish and chips on a Friday, roasty on a Sunday, um, with Yorkshire pudding and and sprouts and you know we do our our holidays and we come we we understand what the weather is as it's like like it's been said talking about the weather is a national sport <laughs> there's skills involved in talking about the weather without sounding boring it's a national sport you have to be good at this stuff you can bring up the weather you're challenging the other person to be as interesting as you are about the weather which is forever changing in the uk from the time I talk to my people in America and Jamaica and I tell them, look, you don't know what snow looks like because you ain't been over there. But we can get snow on Monday, sunny as hell on Tuesday. We could get blustery wind on Wednesday, serious torrential rain on Thursday. It goes on and on and on. We don't know what to wear. That's why our fashion sense is crap. <laughs> because we haven't, we've just got climate as weather. <laughs> we can get it all in one day and one my best um story about this was uh talking to my uh cousin in america new jersey um and i was saying weather is changeable over here to the point where we have no clue what to wear so we could be wearing a fur coat over a swimsuit with an umbrella walking around on the street and that and no one will bat an eyelid because we understand over here but you would think that guy is straight out of the asylum we need to lock that guy up there's something wrong with him the last time i saw something like that was in walmart you know what i mean <laughs> in a marker but no that's normal but the best story i had my my um my anecdote on weather is I was driving my car and I got to a very um, well-known roundabout in Luton at the top of the roundabout. So I was looking right because traffic approaches from the right in, a, in England. The proper way. The proper way to do it. Yeah, it merges from the right. Okay. So I was looking to the right and on my wind, on the, on the, the windscreen and, and side window, rain was falling. And people had umbrella, you know, walking around with their hats and you know, doing what we do in rain. We just muddle through it in five minutes, we'll probably change. And then I looked to the other side to see if it was clear to merge into traffic. And it's sunny on that, on that side, with a guy walking around in shorts. I kid you not. There's a guy in shorts on this side umbrella out on that side at a roundabout. I'm not joking. It's my favourite story to tell. Absolutely true story. And still, when I say it out loud, I'm just like... <laughs> amazing. Amazing to me. Amazing. Anyway, the British way of life will not change is what I'm saying because we have this climate anytime you've got someone coming from overseas they're coming from somewhere sunny more desperate but sunnier and they're like oh gosh damn British weather I can't if you've got a British person saying they can't stand British weather they're not British right all they can say is the weather today is it's seriously out of order. We need to write a petition and get this sorted out. We need some weather control in satellite to sort out Britain. And I'm glad we got global, global, you know, when global warming is considered a thing, you know, climate change. Now. But, you know, I'm glad climate's changing to a warmer climate and we'll be burning up soon. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a swimsuit I've been dying to wear <laughs> walking down the street like they do in California. Anyway, we're moving on.
that was over here. I don't think the culture has got anything to worry about. I'm just certain that some people need to understand change is always around the corner, just like our weather. And you should get used to the it. You should be used to it by now. Right, let's choose that one and that one. Okay. So, whoops. How do we go backwards? Okay, that's wrong. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> ah, boy. My life. Hello, Shell. Sure. You back? Right. Over there. 3D printed meat. I am not joking. This is the thing. And if you don't know about it, where have you been for the last half dozen, half decade? It's about six years on that. The, you know, there's a firm, a scientist, scientist, um, in Israel uh, has found a way to grow from plant um, cells and stem cells of animals meat. It feels like meat is a um, redefined meat, as they call it. Uh, they mix, I mean, this is quite a crude picture of what, you know, this wouldn't be surprised if that was plastic, but that's, it does, it's not fat, blood, and muscle mixed in. It's a lot more sophisticated than that and a lot more involved. But this is just a crude picture to show you what's going on here. If you know what 3D printing is, then you're ahead of the, of the curve. But if you don't picture a printer, a printer that has got um, substance in that that can be layered on top of each other until you build up say like 3D printed wall or 3D printed. Um, this is probably 3D printed, my case cover in a 3D printer. My, you know, that's not unusual. Um, there's millions of products out there that you would not know have been 3D printed, but to, to print something that you can eat has always been the way uh, this has been moving and today's question is will 3d printing be now the norm as a people in spanish in spain scientists in spain have perfected it to the point where people have been given the taste test uh, like pepsi and coke test and they cannot tell the difference between the meats they taste the same when you cook them they smell the same um, everything is the same. Um, the preparation is long, obviously, to get to a point where you've got the product in front of you. But when it when it is cooked and put on your plate, um, they're saying you cannot tell the difference. Nutritionally, as they haven't got the sometimes potentially harmful substances put into the grass and feed of the animals that you have been slaughtered, um, and the processed stuff and the, the chemicals to keep them healthy um, is not in their meat, it's not in their essence, then you're getting basically pure, pure refined meat, if you put it that way. Um, and so, yeah, nutritionally, they can ramp it up um, and they can take it down depending on if you're diabetic, if you've got... Um, arterial problems, if you've got a blood, blood pressure problems, they can change it. So this meat is safe for diabetes, this meat is safe for heart attack victims, this sort of thing. And this is the way forward. Now, those of you who know me, or who say you know me, know I'm a Star Trek fan. And this is what three, Star Trek, especially the next generation, is set 250 years in the future in our future. So the Federation have um, 
machines that they can just order um, to the computer. Computer, give me a hot coffee. Black, two sugars, you know what I'm saying? Black with sugar or something like that. And the computer knows how you like your coffee and produces it from a beam of light. Just like they beam technology teleporting um, to, an, to the planet's surface and back again to the ship. It's the same principle where they will take the material that is stored in the ship. That could be anything. It could come from feces. It can come from urine. It could come from um, any organic material, plants, and they mix it together, take the cellular part of it that is usable, reconstruct it using the computer in a beam of light, send it back to you in a cup, all clean, pure, um, no bacteria in it, proper tasting, proper smelling, and you'll be able to eat it. Okay, because basically what animals do to the plant life is make flesh, just like you eat food and you have flesh. So basically what the machine is doing is making the plant into meat and you won't be able to tell the difference. And I and uh, it's the way forward, obviously. But um, what this Spanish company is saying now is that you probably don't know if you're eating redefined meat today. You don't know because it's so prolific now. It's so out there. Everyone, uh, you know, big restaurants are using it. Small restaurants. I can, I would not be shocked if McDonald's turned around tomorrow and said, yeah, we've been using redefined meat for 20 years now, <laughs> you know, or, you know, for the last five years now, it's much more affordable. We don't have to slaughter any animals. You know, vegans love it because they can eat it too, because it's plants. It's, it's cells and they're not slaughtered. So, you know, vegans who say they're vegan because they don't like the slaughter of animals will be able to eat this meat now. Vegans who say they don't want to eat anything that's, um, flesh based they can eat this now because it's not uh, you know so it's the way forward and I think that people uh, you know once they get their head around it um, they won't they'll first start saying ah Soylent Green that's what's coming next and if you don't know what Soylent Green is <laughs> um <laughs> You may not want me to say what I'm going to say next. <laughs> but if you do, then you understand that it's probably right. Now, I started reading a comic called 2018. It's a science fiction comic. And it was, gave us Judge Dredd and Strontium Dog and Mech Quake and, you know, Road Jaws and all kinds of wonderful characters uh, based like hundreds of years in our future, blah, blah, blah. And it's called 2018, 1978. So it was like a projection of the future. So in Judge Dredd's world, which is a mega city, which is literally a whole country made into one city. So it's a mega city. Uh, you've got millions of people all around and Judge Dredd is a judge because they've got so much unemployment and so much crime. They've made the police judge, jury and executioner. And Judge Dredd is by far the most harshest of them um he's um a, probably a clone actually i think he is a clone of five different judges dna five different chief judges you know the best of the best made this judge and he's the harshest one and he's totally awesome uh he's one of my favorite characters in 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 fiction so um uh and basically, while Judge Dredd's going about his duty, people are angry with him. They take shots at him. He shoots them. He kills them. He calls in. They've been judged. You've got two for recycle. I think I'll pause here. Did you hear what I said? They've got, you've got two for recycle. That means he shot and killed two people two perps as they are, you know, people that broke the law that decided they didn't want to go to jail, to the ISO cubes. Um, he judged them. 
Barely, of course, but Judge Dredd being them. Uh, he's killed them because they tried to kill him. And he's ordered them to be recycled, which means they've got machines that would just come out the wall in his sector, wherever he's calling from, they'll come out the wall and clean up the scene and take the bodies to be recycled into food. Soil and green. This is why you had all these films in the 80s and 90s, because they were getting no ideas from what was really happening in science, in labs. They were trying to do, they've been trying to do this for decades. You know, grow meat. You know, remember the sheep that they cloned? They've been trying to do this for decades. They're trying to make sure that our future is not dependent on slaughtering animals and growing food the size of cars, you know, a tomato the size of a car, so we can feed a thousand people one tomato, you know. <laughs> so this is what's been going on, and it's just moving in a faster uh, arc than we were thought to, to believe. And this report that came out in February, actually, says that the Spanish have been especially around Spain, Europe, Germany, Israel, Israel, yeah, for a long time, have been using redefined meat on a high level. That means it's in restaurants and shops and you can buy it and everyone knows it's available for years. Now, you can't tell me that this isn't required I've got a video. <laughs> I've forgotten. I've got a video for this. I'm going to show you it. One second. And I forget how efficient I am. Q, Q. Here it is. This one is it. There we go. Your steak could soon be 3D printed. That's if you live in Europe. Israeli company Redefine Meat has struck a partnership with importer Giraldi Meats to drive European distribution of its new meat steak cuts. The startup is hoping to establish its products as an alternative to conventionally produced meat. Redefine Meat operates large-scale meat printers at its rare Havert headquarters south of Tel Aviv, as well as in a new factory in the Netherlands. Manager of the company's 3D printers project, Yaron Eschel, explains how it works. When I want to, uh, to create my steak, I, can, I have a, a library of a few different slabs. I can choose each one of them and I can adjust it accordingly. I can define the amount of marbling, the internal fat or the external fat. Wow. And now I can and, and I can start and uh, go and print it and produce it. So I'm putting it, this is my queue, this is my uh, my timeline for today. I know that in an hour or something from now, I will need to refill the, uh, the machine with new, new material. But now I can go directly into the printing process and you can see how, uh, how the process starts to build layer by layer. The company makes its products from ingredients including soy and pea proteins, chickpeas, beetroot, nutritional yeasts and coconut fat. Co-founder and chief executive Eshtar Ben Shitrit said Redefine Meat was launching tenderloin and strip loin steaks. In the past two years we have been working deeply on understanding meat and what makes meat so exciting and we identified a few components that we can recreate from plants and have the same exact uh, performance as the tissue of animal meat, giving you, with the combination of additive manufacturing, the exact feeling, your experience, a good steak, a good cut of meat, coming from an animal without the use of the animal. Plant-based meat alternatives have become increasingly popular in recent years. Spanish startup Nova Meat is also using 3D printing technology to manufacture vegetarian steaks. But the early hype about plant-based meat alternatives has ebbed, as inflation and recession worries have driven some customers back to cheaper animal meat products. 
Companies such as US-based Beyond Meat have cut their sales outlooks. Redefine Meat, however, has big ambitions. Its new meat is currently available in Israel, Britain, the Netherlands and Germany. Almost 1,000 restaurants are currently paying about $40 per two pounds for its steak cuts. The company plans to launch its products at restaurants and butchers in France, then in Italy, Greece and Sweden later this year, and in dozens more countries in 2023. We see a world in a decade from now that new meat or meat made from plants is a big part of the meat industry. It replaces a lot of the meat that people consume today that is bad for the environment and bad for the most, most of the people in the supply chain. I still believe that people will consume high quality meat forever coming from animals and these two industries will live side by side. Even when we will become 1%, 2% and the industry will become 10% of the meat industry, the impact on the planet is so big that it's worthwhile to pursue it in the next decade. Yeah. Oops. Okay. So there you go. That's our report on uh, re redefined meat. It's becoming a big thing now across the world, and I think it's a way forward. And I, I'm I'm in two minds because I've always loved the meat. I've always loved you know, cooking meat and uh, eating, um, you know, the, the, I've tried veg vegetarian meals and they, they're not, they're not for me. They're, they, they lack that oomph in a meal. <laughs> don't feel satisfied. I don't feel satisfied. I don't know about you, but you know, and uh, when I say I've tried vegetarian meal, I've got, you know, they've got burgers that are made out of this, that, and the other, and soy products and blah, blah, blah. So I've tried them. I have to find out what I don't like before I say, nah, never again. And so I try it at least once. And if it's not for me, it's not for me. So it'll be a long time before they say, oh, no, we've, we've upgraded it now. It tastes much better, and blah, 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 before I say, okay, I remember what it was like before. But, uh, you know, you're saying it's better, and I really want to, you know, I don't, you know, it's not about slaughtering an animal. I mean, uh, it's always been the way of humanity is to hunt and then get what you hunt and put it in. And it's a sophistication and, um, and uh, practicality uh, of not being able to hunt anymore has made us go to the shops. So, you know, it's all, it's all nice and easy. You just press a button, order it over the post, it comes in, always uh, order it over email, it comes uh, to your door and you put it in your freezer until you're ready to use it and then you're, it's right there, fresh meat, blah, blah. You have not to have to do anything. You know, have to go and sharpen your tools and keep yourself fit to be able to run after an animal and shoot a bow with that accuracy into its neck and make sure that you don't... Um, <laughs> damage anything on it that causes the, you know, um, the, to meet the spoil once you've, uh, you know, and you had to learn to gut it, butcher it, and use what's left over for all kinds of glue and clothing and, you know, materials to build your house with. Them days are gone. Them days are long gone. And I kind of sad about it, but, you know, I, I kind of keep my skills going because uh, I don't want to have to rely on redefined me and pressing a button to go and get my food. Okay. I want to be able to say I can go in the wild where there are still animals and be able to trap or poach. Poach? Did I say poach out loud? I did. <laughs> be able to capture whatever animal on whomever's land is on. Uh, poach the white swan and <laughs> and do whatever I need to do to get fed and know how to butcher it and you know keep the skills alive uh, there's a film out there called Wally -E. it's about a little robot that is like 
a garbage disposal unit. He puts all the garbage, crushes it, and puts it in nice stacks all in its, you know, where it's supposed to, in a dump. And the, the stacks reach up to, you know, stratospheric levels and stuff like that. Because all the humans have left the planet Earth because there's so much waste. And so Wally has been left behind and that's his life. That's all he knows is stacking up crash every single day to the point where it's um, it's crazy when he sees that humans are coming, uh, are, are on a ship and they're all chilling out on the ship and they're huge. They are massively bloated because they've not had to move. They've not had to move or do a single thing. Anything out of their hands reach has been sorted out for them. And uh, all they have to do is lift the food to their mouth. That's the only thing. Uh, and they run around in floating buggies, like little carts. And uh, the, the story is funny, but at the same time, you realize this is what humanity made. It's on the, on the worst side, you know, the far side uh, of this problem. This is how humanity could, could end up. We'll be woefully lazy uh, to our own detriment until we find, you know, they were looking for another planet basically to invade, <laughs> you know, as humans do. We, we're looking for another planet where it's safe to go and we start and then we could start being farmers and everything and be healthy and all that kind of stuff. But like this world that they left had become so gruesomely over shot by you the, the detritus of humanity that um, it got to the point they had to leave in a big ass that spaceship and they're all chilling out there and they didn't know they thought you know some people were born on the ship they didn't know they're just all big and wondered oh there's there's no point this is our life this is how we're supposed to be but then Wally comes in and finds out that it's been pers purposely done this way to keep them subdued and to not make them want more than what's been given to them. You know, they put all their savings, money, whatever life into the people that supplied the ship. And so the ship is a floating graveyard for them because they're going to live and die on it. Um, and these people have uh, basically control of the world because they have control over the ship. Anyway, it's a long, deep cartoon and it's very insightful, basically. And I can see from what we're talking about today with the meat that it's going to be a problem unless we keep the balance. And like the man said, uh, both industries are going to be around at the same time because we still need to... Uh, there's still going to be those out there that want the pure, correct meat. I'm not going to say this one is incorrect, but I'm saying it's not natural, um, which is another point. Um, Israel, that's where they made God, right? <laughs> and God is like supernatural, but made nature. It made everything. Uh, God made the world and made the plants and the animals and everything and the humans and everything, right? That's your God. And now you're acting as God by making something with your science into flesh that people thought was naturally created. That's crazy. <laughs> How is that religion sitting with this? How is that? It's just some these things go into my this is how my brain I don't know this, this is how my brain goes you know. but uh, you know I think it's healthy <laughs> I think like this but you know it's crazy um yeah but this uh, is not something to worry about and you know the percentage of people um, putting this stuff in the shops is not overrunning your local Audi. Uh, apparently, Aldi uh, shops in the UK are serviced by uh, a massive farmer in, in York. And it's fresh food and poultry beef. 
chicken, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but yeah, so they're, they're not dipped their toe into the re redefined meat yet. And again, with the religious thought I just had, Islam like to slaughter their food, make it halal. And they have to bless it. They have to bless the meat. So are they going to bless the redefined meat that they haven't slaughtered? Because they need to drain the blood to make it halal. Well, what makes it halal is that the way you know, they cut the throat and let it bleed out and then they bless it. So you have to have a, a registered imam to be able to make it halal food. As far as this is what I that's what I've been told by my fan, you know. But uh, and um, so are they going to bless this? Would they have to? Will it be halal? My brain does this stuff. I'm, I don't know why it does it, but it's. I've been told it's not destructive. It's so good. <laughs> this too shall pass. I say to myself, and I wonder what it will pass on to. And therefore, my brain comes out with crazy <laughs> hypothesis that I must think through in order to remain sane. That was uh, over there. We were talking about what's happening outside the UK. And that was about the 3D printed meat that is soon to be in the local shops, like it's a bag of Walker's crisps. Is going to be easily available, readily available, be pretty cheap by the time it gets to your local shops uh, because it'll have to be in competition with normal meat and it will have to be accepted by, I think, religion may sway this one way or the other. Remember when uh, uh, McDonald's uh, had to deal with the amount of immigrants in the UK coming from religious countries that said, oh no, we're going to meet Alal, so we're not going to um, patronise your your outlets until we know that your um, meat is Alal. So what McDonald's had to do was go to the community and say, we need for you to go out and tell your people um, it's all halal, it's all copacetic, everything's good. Um, and they were like, yeah, we're quite willing to do that as long as you've got our imams in your butchery department coming into your place to burn. So that community started making millions, millions to supply halal meats to McDonald's or to come into McDonald's outlets and bless the meat that is going to be used as halal. And to me, straight away, I said, big ass scam is protection racket again. Oh my gosh. And it's, you know, you, you put them over a barrel, you know. The amount of people in Luton in 19, let's go back to the 70s, was 80% Irish as far as I was told, 75, 80% Irish. Then black people came over in the 60s. 60s, 70s, black people coming over in droves. And then we, we got 10% and 20%. You know, five, it was 5% over and 10%. Then people were taken over. Now they've taken over. Now there are too many of them. Now they need to go back to where they came from, blah, 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 to the point. And then black people were like here, seeing Africans coming, Polish coming, Indian, Asian, Chinese coming over, and we were like 5%, 2%, 3 You see what I'm saying? The percentage went up. And each time, the religions were saying, this is our shop. We've got our shop because you don't do our food right. We're doing it ourselves. We're bringing it over from our country, and we're importing it and exporting it, blah, blah, blah. And that's what we're going to do. When we come over to your country, we're not going to eat your food. We're not going to integrate. We're going to do what we want. And so each people with their different culture, different religions, brought in their own foods. And it's great to be like, you know, not caring and just diverse 
and just say, I don't care, let's have Chinese food tonight, let's have Indian food tonight, let's have African food tonight, let's have Caribbean food tonight, let's have English food tonight. It's great. It's great for us. We're flexible. But the people, the little percentage that come in and will not eat anyone else's food, they cornered the market. And I think that's why they did it. They cornered the market. So when this food comes out, uh, this meat comes out, who is going to corner this market? I want to know. I want to know. This is a good question, I say. Who's going to corner the market? Is this way of atheists coming back and claiming it? Because this is atheist meat. It's not by God. <laughs> I'm just stirring the pot now. I know what I'm doing. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm doing. Michelle, can you hear me? Are you muted? And your picture's gone. You want to chat? Do you want to talk? Tell me in the chat if you don't want to talk. I don't know. Even if you can hear me, it would be nice for you to say, I can hear you. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on. <clears throat> Celebrity and community. This is a weird one. There's a button that I can go back. No, no I've missed it. Why does that keep happening? Talk amongst yourselves. Here we go. So, celebrity community. Today we're talking about the Here We Buy car. Dave Mayers died uh, February. I think it was recently, anyway. And it's just been found that he's left everything to his wife and will which includes the TV company that he has and any assets that he has. So now she's become overnight. Well, she was you know, married to him, so she's a millionaire too. So now she's got control of it all, basically. And I think it's awesome. And I also, the question today is, um, anyone, the celebrities are supposed to show us the way you know, to live correct, live live better, basically. What can happen when you've got your life under control, that kind of stuff, as far as I'm concerned. And so they help the communities that are looking up to them because they're the role model. So my question is this. Uh, Lillian, Lillianna, Lillianna, who is the wife, has uh, received all this and... I think she's taken over from it. He was a chef. Um, and uh, they want bikes, so they become the hairy bikers, and they will make uh, uh, proper food. Uh, proper food! Not that over la -di da <laughs> food that you get in them high-class Michelin, 14 Michelin stars restaurants where they've got a grape peeled on one side and Spreg of onion on the other, and they could they charge you 400 grand for it. Uh, it's sophisticated, you're not ready for it. Um, yeah, I ain't ready for this. I'm ready for the tump you in your mouth, but I'm not ready for this stupidness. Um, which would be my answer. Obviously, I'm a violent man, I need to be violent. Um, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be going to the restaurants anywho. But they were a different kind. They were they would make proper food, you know what I mean? Told me old, blah blah blah. They're proper, you know what I mean? As you would as your as your mummy daddy would cook on a Sunday. You know what I mean? Or every day. You know, just everyday food. You know what I mean? Just made uh, very well. And they became famous for it. Well, there must be a dozen seasons out of every bikers. 
Um, and uh, he become very famous. But what I'm not talking about is his celebrity status and why he's a celebrity. I'm talking about his practicality and forethought in making a will. I've made a will. Um, my friends have made wills because they're surrounded by me. But it's not, not surrounded by me, but they're around me. So therefore, I tell them best thing to do would be make a will. My dad made a will. And because of the law in Jamaica, when his assets were realized, he could not act, uh, we could not access them um, because there was a glitch in the will. But we knew what he wanted to leave to whomever wanted to leave it. So they got it. And you know, that's all been sorted out. Uh, to a point, you know, there's still issues to be sorted out with it. And he died 15 years ago, six, 17 years ago. <laughs> My God, 17 years ago he died. And so therefore, I, I, but what he didn't leave behind were bills. He didn't like, leave behind any financial issues at all. His rent was paid up. His um, bills were paid up. He owed no money to anyone. No one came up to me at the funeral and says, you know, your dad owed me 1,500 quid. So, you know, get it back to me when you can. Or, you know, sorry for your loss. That did not happen, not once. Or I didn't know about it. They would, And if they did come up to me, I would probably dump them in the throat. But so probably that's the reason why I didn't it to everybody. But no one else came up and said, someone's been complaining about your dad, blah, blah, blah. All we cared about was uh, burying him correctly uh, to his um, wishes and making sure everyone began their, uh, their mourning correctly, you know, and uh, moved on, which is what he would have wanted get on with it stop messing about and get on with it deal with it and move on was a family motto it is a family motto uh, deal with it and move on so you know get slapped take it or not take it then move on don't deliberate on it don't fuss and that was it and that showed me exactly how I want to leave uh, before because uh, in my opinion as I'm an atheist, I don't believe in all this um, malarkey about heaven and hell and crap. So to me, if I'm going to describe what I think is heaven and hell, it's what I leave behind after I'm dead, which I'm going to do, definitely. And so therefore, I say to myself, um, how did I feel after my dad had gone? Obviously still sad. I'm still in mourning. In colour. Uh, uh, but uh, I know to celebrate what he was about and to practice the kind of things he liked because I I claim them for myself. I think they're pretty cool, what he was about. And uh, added to what I feel the world is about, it's pretty good narrative to keep putting, you know, pushing in my own family. So... And one of them ethics or morals or, or modus operandi, I don't know what you would call it, but, you know, the, 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 the ethos of, the, of our families is to not leave behind hell for your family, which is problems. When I'm gone, the only thing they need to do is mourn properly, my children because my will has been sorted, insurance has been sorted. Uh, so there'll be no reason, there'll be no people coming up and saying blah, 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 blah. If I owe my, what I owe right now is down to me uh, to pay back and everyone will be paid back that has ever helped me. Uh, even if it's just a present or financial or completely financially, if they help me financially out, 
pay them back financially. But I don't want anyone to be coming out with any stories to be telling to my children. That's the main thing. So to get that all done before I go is the mission. <laughs> if you see what I mean. And if everyone had this same frame of same uh, way of thinking, then uh, there'd be a lot less EastEnders chat after someone has died. Because any time I watch in my life, I, I used to watch um, all the soap operas because I had no choice. My, my ex-wife would, would come in and start watching soap operas until she would go to sleep. And so I either had to go on and have a te television to watch what I wanted to watch, or I was sitting next to her doing, reading a book or doing something else. And I, but I had to hear all these from one channel to another, this one, then that one, then this one, then that one. And that's it. That's all I got. So, and it's always ridiculous. It was always far too far. It was always over the top, unrealistic, stupid, in other words. And it was mind numbing. And that's probably why we do all now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's um, not a good look to be getting your ideas from a soap opera. Saying that, a lot of good ideas came from the soap opera I used to watch, which was Star Trek, which was set in space and in the future, where the look was all about, we've dealt with poverty, there's no more poverty, there's no more problems like that, uh, there's no more need or want, we've sorted all them out, the only thing to do now is to better yourself. And so therefore, it's a good thing. Gene Wadderby was a genius writer. And, um, you know, the maker of Star Trek, uh, the founder of Star Trek, blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah, he's, his ideals were to, uh, the world would be a better place if we were just better ourselves to the point of self-enlightenment and understand um, that to better yourself would be to better your community as well. If we all brought ourselves up to very high standards, then the community that we all staying in would be a, a high standard. simple and so if everyone thought like me the problems after death we're all going to face death so all our families are going to deal with our deaths um would be lessened there'll be more time for joy more time for um celebrating the person that's gone rather than cursing them out and dealing with the problems they've left behind uh yeah so that's my uh, take on um celebrity and community is that I'm quite happy that this person Dave Myers um is it David Myers? Yeah. It's a beacon basically to the ideal of uh will and it's a it's a nice little advert to give to um people that used to respect him and watch his programs and like his ideals and stuff like that. It's a, it's a wonderful thought that the, the, the wife is protected. She's sort of, she has no worries. Um, well, you know, the worries would be by herself, to be by herself without her, you know. But, you know, if we all die, and there's different reasons for that, but we are all gonna die. But it's uh, preparing, I say, when you've got children, the best thing you could do for them is to make them so strong and prepared for your leaving that they um, deal with it in the best way possible and just keep on ticking, keep on going. I don't see it as the end of everything. It's a sorrowful occasion. It's a loss, obviously. And so I do things like make messages on, you know, when I had a video recorder, <laughs> uh, a, you know, a VHS video recorder, I would make tapes uh, talking about life, just chatting about what they used to do when they were children. I'd make video of them, you know, with that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it's all in, it's all, it's all out there. 
for them to see after I've gone. Because that's the thing you miss. You miss the essence of a person, their knowledge, their experience. You miss it. So I've been asking, you know, various people in the family, write a book, make a recording, get it out of you and put it down before you're gone and we can't get it no more. You know, because it's important that we all celebrate each other while we're here. Um, it's, it's, it's not good for you to just say, oh, you know, everyone's going to live forever. You know, 100 years, oh, we're going to go to a better world afterwards, blah, blah, blah. I want to live forever. All this kind of stuff is damaging. It's silly and frivolous and selfish, basically, where to the point where you do nothing while you're here because you, you, you can be here forever. Why should I do anything? Why should I struggle? Why should I not struggle? Why should I even uh, strive to to give more back to the community because, you know what I mean, while I'm here, I've got to make a difference kind of thing. I'm going to be here forever. I've got time. It's no problem. Stinking thinking, which is what we're going to be talking about in what sparks me off, funny enough. <laughs> um, I think I'll get onto it right now. So that was celebrity community, quick one, but you know, important as usual. Oh, did I get the video of this guy? I think I did. Yeah. What sparks me up? Today, we're talking about people who have stinking thinking. Yeah, so let me see if I can find this video. And it will explain to you what stinking thinking is. Rather than me just keep belting out words, um, I'm going to have this guy explain it, explain his personal. Oh, yeah, I've got to select that first. Gosh. Okay. Here we go. Come on. Do it. Do it. Oh, wrong button. Right. This one. Two things more, I just. Somebody comment on my TikTok and I say, oh, any man who wear makeup, a body man. First of all, if me have a daughter and she want to put her makeup or whatever upon me, I don't really give a shit what you want to call me. Because that out there, that man there a real father. I don't give a shit when none of you want to say that the man there. They don't have to say good man or good man. The man has show them say good man still out there. Good father still out there no matter what the bullshit them come with. And one next comment will upset the shit out of me. The man has to make comment and talk about no man is no supposed to play with them data. So. Bad man, if you get turned on, by your daughter playing with you like that, you need to check your fucking self, yeah? You need to check your damn self. Because me, so me can play any pitney. Because me can control myself. Certain things are supposed to cross your mind. But because you're simplistic and you look like you want help. If you can't ramp with pitney, especially a girl pitney, and, and you not get on here or something like that, you need to check yourself, bad man. Because that's a child, you're a pedophile. Okay. Man like if I go to prison or leave it to you people and then get jungle justice. Oh, you're talking about you're supposed to play with a child and have a child on a river in a water or splash up. You come like you turn you on. Mm -hmm. You want somebody who will and give years as. Yes. The man a good father. We need to wise up as Jamaicans and stop coming with the bullshit and some of quick for judge. We need to ask a couple questions. 
there, there's no mother in the pitney life, you know, the man are doing supposed to do, you know. No mother no the day. And someone, yo, it will bone me for someone to move all. It will bone me. Catch up. Okay. Yeah, so that if that doesn't explain it, I don't know what will explain it. Stinking thinking is you get these rank over over the top thoughts on people doing normal stuff. And it doesn't have to be a uh, you know the, like that one, that particular stinking thinking. It could be just rank thought, you know, just this uh someone's doing something. Um, and uh, you know, like you you dress your your mum, like okay, this is what happened to me. Okay, I was well, looking for the family album once, you know, big family party, everyone's there, everyone's there, and everything like that. Loads of family around, cookout, whatever we're doing, and the family album comes out. And we're all laughing at all the pictures, and someone says, "Who's this one in a dress?" This little this guy looks like one of the one of uh, one of the sons, and my mum goes, "Oh, that's Victor." And so I came over, looked at it, and it's like a, a, I was about three years old or something like that, and um, I was dressed in a dress. So uh, at that point, now you can either say. Why is the woman, why is the mum dressing her son in a dress? That's wrong. That's, what's she up to? What's her damage? Why is she doing that? Why is she, does she want her son to come out gay or something? What, what's going on? Is she dressing all of them in dresses? But, but no. Her simple explanation was this, that she had always wanted a daughter. And I was the third and she had one son, my eldest brother, then my elder brother, and she was hoping so that I was a girl. I was a third, another son. And funny enough, she had a fourth, another son. So she was doomed. <laughs> so anyway, I'm I'm two, three, look very cute. And she said, you know what? I've got this little dress I had planned for my daughter. Um, I'm going to put it on her, take pictures, put it on me, <laughs> take a picture. And, uh, you know, be very funny and uh, laugh, 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 everyone laugh. So, yeah, it's funny. Everyone just reacted the same way we did. It's fun. We knew why she did it. Funny story. Carry on. But you know what? Years later, you could say someone in that party was like, mm -hmm. look what she do. What that about what? You know what I mean? And just rank thinking. <sighs> and it happens all the time. And it's something that has always annoyed me when I see it happening. I used to work in a nursery, uh, Jill Blouse nursery, as a liaison between the dads and, uh, you know, the nursery. Um, so you've got some single dads, you've got some dads who've got partners and they bring their children on a Saturday to have breakfast, make breakfast for their children and to play games and we go on trips and I arrange the trips and keep them entertained while they're there and listen to their problems. And I hear all the same kind of problems from the mum. Um, you're, you're taking out your childhood on our child. And, you know, what is your experience got? Your bad experiences and your good experiences go into your child. No matter what you think, they will go into your child and will be either beneficial or not beneficial. But we use our experience of our childhood to bring up our children. There is no playbook here. You do what you think is right. So if you've been taught a way, you'll bring up your children a way. I have never dressed or cross-dress my children, right? So what happened to me as a child did not rub off on my children. And to the, to the point where, but what I can say is, my son was born first, and he's five years older than my daughter. And, 
you know, six, seven years old, his hair was long to the point where it could be cane road, which was the trend back then, and it would reach down to his past his neck, past his shoulders. It was long, 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 long. So he got to, uh, I think, uh, six years old, and my daughter was born, and her hair was long and, you know what I mean, because mum was a hairstylist, so she knew how to do it, keep it right and clean it co correctly and grow it properly. Anyway, one day, I was all like, why are you letting his hair grow back? He looks like a girl. All the people are saying how cute he looks and blah, blah, blah. You know, oh, he's a man, man. What's going on? What's he, you know, his hair is so long. Um, you know, and Kane Road, which was like, you know, he had the Bo Derek thing going on at the time where she was teaching culture and putting in Kane Road. So anyone after that, that had this Kane Road, they would think of her. And so therefore my boy was thinking like, people were thinking like, you girl. So it used to irritate me. Just like, mm, you know, don't like it. Mm. And then one day, because my ex-wife had to deal with so much hair because she was a hairdresser. So she had to do hair for people here for the, then she had to do her son's hair. Then she had to do her daughter's hair. And she was just like, this is too much. She's going into school soon. Um, and he, she scalped him like this. Right. And I was like, What's he got his hair for? What's he got his hair for? That's his, that's his thing. He's a lion. He's, he looked at shaking around and he used to dance with it and shake it around and he loved his hair. What the hell? He um, I raised hell over that. <laughs> so it's crazy. But, um, uh, no, I didn't have no stinking thinking about it, but I can see how other people do. And I didn't like seeing it. And I didn't like the thought that I had when I, you know, I mean, people were saying how cute he looks and everything like that. I was like, cute, why? Cute because he's got an angel face or cute because he's got the hair and he looks young and like a girl. What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> stinking thinking, not good. I mean, uh, it, it's negative, it's not productive. And the worst thing about it is not the fact that someone's doing this thinking, thinking, or they make their thinking public to other people and draw them into it, is that the other people go along with it. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, 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 you know, just start agreeing with you. And they don't know the story. They don't know anything. They don't know nothing. They just go with the flow of what, what they think that person feels is going on. So, yeah, I don't like, um, it's not about really, the stinking thing is kind of natural, but it's when other people just jump on the boat and go with it, no matter what the story is. They don't make, they don't gather their own information, they don't do any research. They just carry on with this thinking, thinking, and sometimes expand upon it. I I have so many uh, stories that can back up what I'm saying, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, is It's not like um, anyone is going to believe it more, but in the time in these times, back in the day, it was just hearsay and stupidness, and it was and it was talk at that time, and it never gone no further. Uh, and people waited. Uh -huh, we'll see. And then, you know, people grow up, and then my son would be ancient, all this kind of stuff. And then, oh no, it was. It was just he just had long hair. You know what I mean? Actually, he grew it back to the point it was long, long again. <laughs> Down to his, again, he grew it all back. You know, maybe like 10, 11 years old, he's, all his hair is back. Now his hair is like this again. So, you know, crazy. But anyway, moving on from my, my son, um, uh, there's media out there now. We've got internet. You know, back in the day, you just blow over and whatever you say, mate. I don't give a damn. You'll see. No one needs to talk to you. You can think what you freaking want. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, you think what you want, you'll see. You know what I mean? Um, people, the truth will out in the end. That's that's what we used to say. 
But now we've got the internet. And so now once it's on the internet and it's on a social media and you use several social media to put out your thoughts on what's going on, now people become influences. They become influences to the point where they come out with evidence. What they say is evidence. <laughs> And, you know, gather pictures together and say, see, see, it's like I said, I'm not a bad guy. I'm just seeing the truth. He did that shit. He's up to that shit. Blah, blah, blah. But again, me, I always go, hmm, this too shall pass. And wait. I wait a minute, just a minute, just to see who else joins in and where they got their information from. I don't just believe this one hateful dude or this hateful woman I just wait until someone else comes in and either corroborates it or this is the person that come out with the same stupid stupidness or crazy um, finding it's like okay I'll come up to you and say um, Yeah, my 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 dad used to wear a, a shower cap on his head. I don't, I'm thinking of something, and it was one uh, uh, mum's shower cap, you know, the plastic one with the elastic around it. With the, you know, it just looks like a. <laughs> this didn't happen, by the way. I'm just trying to think of something that it can, so you can get a visual image. And he had to answer the door. Let's say he had to answer the door um, in his dressing gown, but he forgot to take off the hat. And then when he answered the door, people saw him in the hat and thought, that's strange. Mr. Evelyn, normally a very brutal man, you know, he's strong and Angry man, you know, wearing them things there. Like, I wonder if I'm a wolf, da. You could just see the stinking, sinking, and you see where it happens. Church, they're famous for it. Don't cuss me about I'm, a, I'm against church. Think about your church. There's people that used to go to my, my college, and we used to have a, a break. And all they used to talk about was who, what was happening to X, Y, who's, <laughs> who's bugging who and who's getting fat. Basically, what's going on, stinking thinking, was going on all the time. And I used to think, these people got nothing else to do. All they talk about is the congregation and what who's up, who's up to this and who's up to that. And what, what everyone is, they're trying to deflect away from themselves. That's what's going on. When you accuse someone of something so heinously, heinous and everything, it's normally because you're trying to deflect away from yourself because he's a bully. And you want someone, you want the attention away from you and on them. So you're always talking about other people so no one ever looks at you and says, what's your damage? What, what, what are you hiding? That's what's going on. Uh, I've always thought that of this, you know, I, there's certain people I can name right now. <laughs> and that'll be sticking to me. But yeah. And I, I just had to watch them from across the room to the point where, you know, I would come out with, you know, because I've been doing martial arts a long time by that point. I was uh, 17, 18 going to college. And I had been doing martial arts for like 12 years. So I was deep. I had like three martial arts under my belt at this point. And so I was brought up by martial artists, warriors, you know, people that have got serious experience of the world because they're constantly dealing with a myriad of people in the community. And they, they've helped a lot of people. So they're helping me. They're talking to me. They're reasoning with me, talking about ethics and morals and blah, blah, blah. So when I come out with something, people are like, Ah, hmm. I like, yeah, I like that. I like the way you think. And they come to me for advice and blah, blah, blah. So anytime someone will come up with some stinking, rinking, thinking, 
I'll be out there saying, yeah, but you don't know because blah, 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 blah. They might go, no, nah, that's a good point. No, seriously, no, you're out of order, man. No, you, you shouldn't have come out with that, man. Look what Rich said, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. You don't know, do you? You don't know, do you? Therefore, you should go and do some more research before you start blowing your mouth. True story, Rich, you're good, man. And so people would listen to me. So once or twice I would use my superpower and say, um, People offer me like, for like, like uh, an example was saying, um, "Do you want, do you want some crisps?" I said, "No, crisps are not good for you. You shouldn't eat them. You should throw them away." I said, "What? Everyone's everyone's eating crisps are bad for you. Why? What's good? And they stop eating crisps. And it's like every they start eating biscuits or start eating cakes or something. They start eating something else from crisps because." Victor had come out with some info about it and then made them double think. But all I was trying to do was just to get them to see they shouldn't just listen to people what they say, they should go and do research. Back then we didn't have the internet, you couldn't Google me, you couldn't Google it and and um, de debunk what I was saying instantly. So I had power for a few days. And people would say, you know what, are you are you certain about this, this you know, this Chris thing? It can cause poisons and cancer and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I didn't say all that. Where did you get that for me? Go, no, I was just chatting to people about what you said. I said, I didn't say that. I said, I don't like them. I can't bug to eat Chris. You can eat what you want. I don't give a damn. So we were like, huh? Really? I says, yeah, what did you hear? That I told you that there's cancer in it or... Yeah, I heard all kinds of things. I said, you shouldn't always listen to what people say about things. You should research it for yourself. I felt good. I felt good. Um, so that's what we've done today. We've talked about um, over here. Let's do this. Let's go through the whole thing. I like my, my slides I make up. I take time. To, to make up my slides. Now I can't bring them. Oh, here we go. I just want to know why I can't go backwards. What sparks me off talking about stinking thinking? People who do stinking thinking, negative thoughts about people just made up because of a, a silly comment or a silly thing that someone did and now they've made up some negative thinking about it and passed it on. And what's worse, people take it on and pass it themselves. Celebrity community, we talked about Dave Myers giving his wife in a will, everything. After, you know, after the will came out quite recently, uh, he's found that he's given over a million pound in assets and of course, control of the company, complete shareholder, the sole shareholder of his TV production company. He was a hairy biker, one of the hairy bikers. And his wife, Liniana, now has it all and therefore presumed heaven on earth, as I quite eloquently and poetically put it. <laughs> so is my uh, conclusion that everyone should learn from their peers or their role models, uh, people they like and their methods. And I think controlling what happens after you die is a nice thing to do. Or can, you know, how people get um, rewarded is best uh, to be way to be remembered. Over there, we talked about things happening in Europe, Spain, and Israel as well, outside of Europe, but around the world. Um, for years, people have been eating what used to be called synthetic meat, but now it's more uh, redefined meat. It's meat that has come from plants, um, broken down by uh, stem cells from animals. No, not broken down by, but derived from the stem cells of animals mixed with um, all kinds of everything that's in regular flesh. Um, they don't put it in like, you see this 3D printer doing it here, which is a, 
a crude uh, example of what they're trying to do, put fat, blood and <laughs> muscle inside. No, they're using broken down constituents that make up um, the cellular uh, makeup of the, the flesh and grow it um, until it's viable and then print it using 3D printers, industrial 3D printers, and it's available in restaurants all over the place. And quite recently, they've stated, this Spanish firm, that it will be as available as a packet of crisps in the very near future. So we won't have to rely on slaughtered meat anymore. And I think that was a jab at halal meat. Just my opinion, that is, by the way. <laughs> Is now vegetarians can eat this redefined meat. It's awesome. Join the club. And over there, over here, we talked about St. George's Day being a typical holiday or celebratory day for the British. And it's been overwhelmed by the um, authoritarian who are more pro Islamic, pro Israel, pro anyone else but British because British has been connected to, being British has been connected to racism, colonialism, and has been uh, demonized by the media who overseas like to say, Britain is against us and they don't like immigrants and they're very racist over there and xenophobic. So to the point where since peaceful protesters pe 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 peaceful celebrators <laughs> turned up in London and the police were ready for them like they were going to cause a riot because they heard that the far right groups were going to turn up as well and make problems but that didn't happen there were instances of course because when you get any large group of people there will be a hair trigger to the problem uh, to any problem so I say we've got nothing to worry about in terms of our culture diminishing or deteriorating or even being eradicated because we are in the majority right now as British citizens. People that are born here and understand the culture and uh, continue the culture, you know, fish and chips, tea, roasty on a Sunday, you know, bubble and squeak at the breakfast, you know, full English breakfast, blah, blah, blah. We, we're still, the culture continues. You know, bad bad haircuts, bad teeth, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I can vouch for bad teeth. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'll soon sort out my teeth. People don't worry about me. But anyway, that's what we talked about uh, in over here. And thus concludes another episode of Blaps Talk. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you, I had a visitor, but she listened more than uh, contributed, which is fine. Absolutely awesome. I'm just glad to know that I'm not talking to my to myself. It would be awesome if someone just came in and listened every week. Then I could carry on like I'm talking to them. Uh, but it's fine. You can come in. You can stay silent, anonymous, not even talk to me. It's not a problem. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. As long as I know someone's out there, I will continue to do these because uh, people report back to me on YouTube, which is B-L-A-P-P-S, the letter U, the number two, Blaps U2, um, my channel on YouTube, uh, to say that, yeah, we I like what you're talking about. You know, this didn't happen. I didn't hear that sound. I didn't see the picture, blah, blah, blah. So I get reports all the time and it will get better it will get back to what it used to be we used to be worldwide and um, hundreds of people listening every week um, we'll get back to it as soon as people start passing on the good news anywho this has been black stalk you've been awesome everybody be cool you be cool i love you and there's nothing you can do about it you have been blapsed joe laundry Doo 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 dum dum dum.